All right, I came back. Sorry, I had to um, attend to my grandson. He's here right now, and I'm hoping he will stay so we're willing. Hope that work. All right, so I left off on page 149 of chapter 13. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Dramatically, um, let me see. Da -da -da -da. Why can't you commit your life to Christ, I asked. Well, I can't see the benefits, but I just can't. In fact, I find myself getting very anxious and restless as we talk about it. I think we'd better stop now. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Not long before, I would have stopped there. But praise the Lord, thanks to his training, I easily recognized all the symptoms, so I persisted. Let me ask just one more question. When you try to think about Jesus, is it is it kind of like... You run up against a blank wall and it becomes such an effort and it becomes such an effort to continue thinking about it that you just give up. Yes, that's that's it. How did you know? Well, I have been in God's training school. Tell me what occult activities have you been involved in? She reacted with shocked surprise. How did you know about that? I haven't done much, but I did visit a palm reader about eight years ago for kicks. I've been back to palm readers and fortune tellers several times since then and recently have been doing my horoscope, but nothing really serious. Well, Jane, that superficial involvement involvement in the cult, occult has been enough to put you into demonic bondage so that you can't accept Jesus. But I have good news for you. Jesus came to set the captives free because I am his. He has given me the power and authority over Satan and his demons. Now, you demons who are binding and blinding, Jane, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You may no longer operate in her life. <clears throat> Jane looked startled as if she wondered if I had taken leave of my senses. But I merely changed the subject and talked about something else for about 10 minutes. Then I asked, Jane, I asked you once before about accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior a while ago. You know that's what you needed. You, you know that's what you need to do. How about praying with me now? She looked surprised and then relief flooded over her face. You know, I would like to pray with you now. I can accept Jesus. I don't know why I didn't do it so earlier. We both knelt down together and another captive was released from Satan's kingdom in darkness and entered into God's kingdom. I then told her about the doorway she had opened and she prayed and closed them to Satan forever with the precious blood of Jesus. <sighs> for your blood jesus number two a 20 year old girl came into an emergency room where i was working one evening her complaint was that she was afraid that if she didn't get help she would commit suicide she was depressed and afraid and she felt as if she had nothing left to live for her life was empty and without meaning after talking with her for a while i told her plainly that what she needed was jesus christ and shared the gospel with her she responded my parents are Christians and I was raised in church. I know that what you say is true, but I'm just not ready for that yet. You demons binding this girl, I'll bind you now in the name of Jesus. You may no longer operate in her life. As I said this, she looked at me as if I were crazy, but quickly forgot about it as I changed the subject and talked about something else for a few minutes. Then, Susie, you just admitted a few minutes ago that you knew that what I was saying was true, that you need Jesus in your life. How about praying with me now and asking him to become your Lord and Savior and Master? Yes, I'd like to do that. No one really asked me to do so before. Will you help me? I don't know what to say. So Susie prayed with me and started on the road to eternal life. On further gentle questioning, I discovered that the doorway opened in her life had been a brief one weekend experimentation with street drugs at the age of 13 at a slumber party. That's all it took to bind her mind demonically. From the way she described her life, I have no doubt that prior to the time I met her, she had many opportunities given to her to accept Jesus, but was bound from doing so. Number three, example number three. An 80-year-old man was admitted into intensive care unit with a very severe heart attack during the time I was the medical resident in charge of the unit. After examining him, I knew he probably wouldn't live very, for very long. He asked me how he was doing, and I told him that it wasn't, he wasn't doing very well and that he had a very severe heart attack. He turned away and started to cry. The conversation went as follows. Oh, doctor, please don't tell me that. I can't take it. Sir, what is the matter? Are you afraid to die? Yes. Do you know what will happen to you after you die? Yes, young lady. I'm going straight to hell. I was most surprised as very few people are so straightforward. Please, sir, let me tell you how you can avoid going to hell. No, no, I've heard it all before. It does no good. Don't bother. Well, want to or not, you are going to hear about Jesus one more time. I then shared the gospel in 
about four sentences. Brevity is a must in such situations. I know it all. I know that's right, but I just can't. Sir, just repeat these words after me. Jesus, save me. I can't. I can't. Go away. Sir, I know that you're being blocked. You're right. You can't say those words. Tell me, do you know who is blocking you? At this point, he turned and looked straight in my eye and said, Satan and his demons, I have good news for you. Jesus came to set the captive free. And you surely are a captive. But I am a child of the king and I have been given his authority over Satan and the demons. Oh my goodness, this book is powerful. I then out loud addressed Satan and his demons in the name of Jesus bound them. I will never forget that the joy that came over the old man's face. He took my hand and tears streamed down our faces as he prayed to Jesus, asking him to be his Lord and Savior. I could see the peace spread over him. He looked up and said, young lady, I have been longing and searching and wanting to come to Jesus for 50 years, but could not. As I talked to him for a while, he told me that about an at the, about the age of 30, he was working as a sailor. His ship stopped in the Philippines for a while. During shore, he had become involved in an argument with some of the local people. They had placed a voodoo curse on him with the results that he'd been seeking Jesus for 50 long years. But was bound from accepting him because no one he had talked with knew to make use of the tremendous power and authority Jesus has given to us or to recognize what had happened to him. The next day, when I went in to see him, he was much worse physically, but he was radiant. His last words to me were, young lady, I have perfect peace. He went into a coma and died shortly after that. Oh my gosh, that's sad, but at the same time, that is awesome, good Lord. God is good, all glory to God. Example number four. A 44-year-old woman was brought into my office by her friends because she was on the verge of committing suicide. Her friends brought her to me because they knew that I was a Christian physician and they hoped that perhaps I could help her. Her story was no different than so many I've heard. She was born to Christian parents who loved her and she knew that they did. But somehow in her teens, her life began to go wrong. She began to run around, run around with the wrong crowd at school, getting into all kinds of illicit sexual relationships. She remarked, I knew that what I was doing was wrong and deep down inside I really didn't want to do those things, but I couldn't seem to help myself. I had been raised in church and I knew what was right and wrong. I never seemed to be able to bring myself to actually accept Jesus and commit my life to him as my brothers and sisters did. I never knew why. I just wasn't ready, I guess. By the time she was 17, she had already had a baby out of wedlock, with which her parents made her give up for adoption. Later that year, she succeeded in committing suicide and spent three months in a psychiatric hospital. The rest of her life had been spent in and out of psychiatric institutions, going to numerous psychiatrists and psychologists, taking innumerable drugs and tranquilizers. Nothing helped. She wasn't able to make any stable relationship or experience any love. She had a second child out of wedlock and ran away from home at the age of 19, fearing that her parents would make her give the second child up for adoption also. Finally, two years before she came to see me, she started attending a church and eventually accepted Jesus. Life improved then over the next year. She stopped drinking and was able to hold a steady job. She found true Christian friends who spent much time with her, helping her to change and clean up her life. Her joy was reading the Bible and praying. Then suddenly one day... <laughs> I felt as if someone had slammed the door shut and all was darkness. I could no longer read the Bible or pray. I could no longer sense the Lord's presence. I was in great distress. I kept going to church because I knew that that was the only answer. I no longer had any joy. I've talked to many ministers who told me that there must be some unconfessed sin in my life or that the Lord is putting me through, through a test. But I know that I'm being destroyed. I'm no longer having desire to go on living. The only way out for me is suicide. I asked her if she had ever felt as if there was something inside of her that was not her, but that controlled her actions and often her thoughts. She brightened. Oh, yes, I often have. I really think that there is something inside of me that isn't me. I've asked several ministers if I could have a demon, but they told me, y'all better pay attention. Uh, but they told me, Christians can't have demons. I guess I'm just crazy anyway. The psychiatrist told me that I was schizophrenic when I tried to tell them about this, quote, thing. Alas, how ignorant so many people are. Sarah did indeed have a demon in her, a very powerful one with many lesser demons under him. The Lord instructed me to search for the key, the doorway that had been opened to the demon. 
at the Lord's leading, I asked Sarah if she remembered any incident from her early childhood that was very traumatic for her. After thinking a few moments, she said, you know, it's funny that you asked such a question. I do vaguely remember that my mother mentioned to me once that I was raped when I was a little girl. She would never talk to me about it, said it was best forgotten. I remember a man grabbing me and throwing me to the ground, but all I, rem all I remember is lying on the ground looking up into a beautiful flowery crab tree. I don't remember anything else about the incident. Oh my goodness. That was the doorway. The demon which entered into her while she was being raped had been had remains in her undetected for many, many years and destroyed her life. He was a particular ca class. He was of a particular class, which I will discuss later, that can inhabit body, soul, and spirit all at the same time. He has thousands of tentacles, which he winds and entwines deep down into each area. He was who slammed shut the door in her spirit so that she could no longer sense God's presence. The growth had takeover of the Holy Spirit. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me, let me say this. Hold on. Let me go slower. The growth and takeover of the Holy Spirit was something that he could not tolerate. So he tried to turn Sarah away from her commitment to the Lord. But the Lord had held on to Sarah. And over the next two hours, that demon and many others, which were his subordinates, were cast out. At last, after many, many years, Sarah was set free. Praise the Lord. Again, she experienced... What is this kid doing? She experienced the sense in her spirit of the Lord's presence read his word joyfully and for the first time in her life began to live a normal healthy life and experience the love of jesus christ our lord i again was reminded of hosea 4 6 which says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge example number five a well-built 35 a well-built 35 year old man came to my office with the following complaint my life is being destroyed it is falling in pieces around me i can't put my finger on any particular thing but i know what is happening i'm dying i talked with him and questioned him for over an hour seeking the key his health was excellent he had no medical problems did not feel ill in any way he was a christian although he did not have a deep walk with the lord his marriage was happy his children were well, his relationship with his entire family, good. He had a good job in which he was happy. Finally, I asked him a question about every body system. Finally, as I, asked, as I questioned him about every body system, he said, I did used to have trouble with my sinuses until about... Hold on a minute. <clears throat> Mijo, pero que tu estás haciendo? Oh, my Lord. What is that? What is this? Give me that. I'm sorry, guys. My grandson's holding on to something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, papito, no. Mm -mm. All right. I'm sorry, I can't pause it because then the video will have to start another one. I ain't trying to make a part three. So he said three years ago, he had a sinus problem three years ago, but I haven't had any since. Interesting, he had told me that it was over the last three years that he had the feeling that his life was falling apart. What happened three years ago to cure your sinuses? Hmm, pay attention, people. Oh, I went to Dr. So-and-so and had acupuncture. It really worked. I had no trouble since. That was the key. During the physical, physical examination, I read an electrocardiogram EKG on him. While well, the EKG uh, 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 machine <clears throat> was tracing him, of his heartbeat, I suddenly felt an overwhelming presence of evil in the room. Immediately, the young man's heart stopped. I wasn't exactly sure what I was dealing with, but I rebuked the evil in the name of Jesus, and his heart spontaneously started beating again. His heart had stopped beating for over one full minute. After the Lord revealed to me that the evil I had felt was the spirit of the acupuncturist, mm -hmm. he was drawing strength from the patient even to the extent of stopping his heart briefly. The Lord had allowed this to happen at that particular time from my instruction. Demonic doors had been left in this young man through the acupuncture needles, acupuncture needles to leave him open to the control of the acupuncturist similar to a hypnos hypnotist, hypnotist. Hypnotist, excuse me. The acupuncturist was drawing strength from this young man for his own use. That is why he had the feeling his life was being destroyed. It was. I cannot tell him what was happening. He would have thought I was crazy. He was a superficial Christian, not yet ready to accept the fact that demons even existed. So I asked the Lord, what can I do in such a situation? Use the most powerful tool you have, was his answer. Pray mightily for that young man. Over the next year, I fasted and prayed for that young man many times. Finally, after a year, the Lord spoke to me one day and told me that 
in response to my prayers. He had delivered him without him even knowing what had happened. Shortly after, I had saw him again for a minor problem, and he told me that he was feeling much better. Again, Jesus has set the captives free. <clears throat> Example number six, a young 24 year old man came under my care because he had tried to commit suicide. Rick had been raised in a Christian home in a loving family and he fully committed his life to Jesus to, he fully committed his life to Jesus during his teens and had a very close walk with the Lord. Hearing him speak to him in his spirit, he was very intelligent, young man and after college had entered um, graduate school at a seminary to become a minister. The Lord was the joy of his life. And suddenly about a year before I met him, he was no longer able to commune with the Lord. He found it almost impossible to read his Bible or pray and was completely unable to sense the Lord's presence. He counseled and prayed with a new number of people, but received no help. He began to Papito. He began to, I lost my spot, sorry, to have much difficulty concentrating on any of his studies and his grades fell drastically. He finally became so despairing that he had dropped out of school entirely about a month before the suicide attempt. He felt he had nothing left to live for. I questioned him, trying to find the doorway. Finally, as I asked him to tell me about everything he had done shortly before the trouble began, he related the following story to me. Shortly before I started school in the fall, a year ago, I drove out to Denver, Colorado. My mother had called and asked me to come to her. Mother was critically ill in the hospital out there. I took a few days off from work and drove out. On arrival in the city, I headed straight for the hospital. As I was driving through the city to the hospital, I suddenly had the sensation of something dark like a cloud dropping down over me. It lasted for only a few seconds. Oh my goodness. And then was gone. I didn't think I didn't think any more about it when I got to the hospital and I found out that my grandma had just died just a short time before I arrived. I stayed for the funeral and then returned home. On further in questioning him, he told me that his grandmother had been deeply involved in witchcraft. Many members of the family had tried to bring her to see her need for Jesus without success. That was the doorway, inheritance. At the death of the grandmother, the powerful demons that inhabited her were passed on to another member of the family. Of course, Satan would choose Rick as he was preparing to enter full-time service for the Lord. After deliverance, he was restored again to a full and free communion with the Lord. A simple prayer and faith by his parents breaking any lines of inheritance from Rick's grandmother would have protected him from such a thing. But they lack knowledge. I know that many people will say that Rick should have been protected from such a thing because he was a Christian. But the Bible states plainly that the sins of the parents will be passed down to the children, even to the third and fourth generation. That is why God so strongly warned the Israelites against any involvement in the occult. Christian needs to be aware of this. If they are aware of anyone in their family that has been involved in the occult in any way, they should ask the Lord to close that door way of inheritance with the precious blood of Jesus, both for themselves and their children. I'm going to have to pause again. I'm sorry. <clears throat>